Welcome to Politics Done Right on KCFT. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Give me a call at 713-526-5738. That is 713-526-KPFT. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host, along with my co-host. Her name is Roxy. Hey, Roxy. <laughs> how are you doing today, my dear? I am doing good. Just got, you know, a lot. You know, it's it's pledge drive, so, you know. All we're doing is trying to get people to call to to keep us on the air. You know, we got we're a hundred percent reliant on caller donations now. So we got to we got to get that. You know, we got to get that money in so we can keep Egberto doing what he likes to do. Talking about politics. Talking about politics, but not only about politics, Roxy. What we talk about here is real politics. That's why we actually call it politics done right. Although a friend of mine told me, hey, you need to call it politics done left. And I'm like, no, actually politics done left is politics done right. But hey, <laughs> what am I going to say? You know, that's just a part of the game. So anyhow, folks, really, we are dependent on you and there are diff- many different levels of membership that you can have from starting at $3.34 a month, $40 a year. Think about that, that you can help us keep politics done right on air giving you real information. Think about this. Last week, you know who we had on? Remember that young lady that we had on? Rula Jabril, woman who challenged the mainstream media. After she challenged the mainstream media, think about it. Nobody was there. Nobody was there to, to help her on air. She came here to Politics Done Right and made her case. Before I forget, folks, there is a hashtag that we're starting to use that I'm monitoring on Twitter. Hashtag Politics Done Right. You like that, Roxy? I do. We have our own hashtag. Hashtag now. Politics Done Right. I'll be following hashtag Politics Done Right. You have something to say? Let me hear it. But you know, folks, last week, Senator Elizabeth Warren touched on a subject that affects millions. She spoke about the student loan crisis created by banks. And, and you'll see later on, by banks. This is a story that inevitably affects a large percentage of the American population. A large number of American students are saddled with debt before they had even begun their careers. Senator Elizabeth Warren, however, in the hearing last week, detailed an even more sinister occurrence. Banks abuse parents who co-signed loans. I will talk about that a bit during, and, and of course we're going to be talking a whole lot about asking you guys to keep these programs on air keep politics then right on air so this is the beginning of our or we are deep into the summer sizzle drive and this is actually the last week so today's the last week that when you call in we're asking you to make a donation for a while so i'm going to ask you to go ahead and do that now but do remember next week you get a chance to talk to roxy and myself and complain about whatever we have to say or agree with whatever we have to say or make a point to, for you to remember that this is community radio and this is one place where you get a chance to actually be a part of the discourse. Right, Roxy? Yes, 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 yes. Is it is it that time of the program? Well, actually, it is that time of the program, Roxy. It is. So it's time for... It's time for the weekly blog post. Well, 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 well. Elizabeth Warren Grill Banker illustrating the immorality of student loans. And I'm going to play a clip of that, not yet, but right after I read this blog, because I want you to hear it in the way the banker reacted and in the way she spoke, because that's the kind of person we want on our side. 
Senator Elizabeth Warren continued her fight for the middle class as she grilled Mr. Richard Hunt, the president and CEO of Consumer Bankers Association, about the immoral student loan practices by bankers. She started by expressing concern that most loans, whether they are credit card loans, car loans, or other loans, can be discharged in bankruptcy to enable a fresh start. Corporations take advantage of bankruptcies all the times as they stiff companies large and small for their irresponsible behavior. Ironically, a bankruptcy hit on an individual is more permanent than on a corporation. As a made-up legal entity, corporations can just die and reincarnate themselves with the same principles under a different charter. Elizabeth Warren's illustrated the draconian nature of bank student loan policies by relating a CNN money story about a family who was struggling for relief after their daughter died. They co-signed their daughter's $100,000 in loans. She died, and the banks came after the grieving parents who were left taking care of three grandchildren and a huge student loan to pay. The banks did not forgive the loans because student loans cannot be discharged in bankruptcy. Very few extenuating circumstances can force the forgiveness of a loan. So this was her ending statement, and Roxy is going to play it in a minute. She said, so far, what the bank has said is no, Elizabeth Warren said. The banks have not forgiven those loans. They have not provided adequate relief to this family, and I don't know how many other families are in those circumstances. There really is no substitute for bankruptcy protection, but banks went out and lobbied to make sure that they were going to be exempt from the bankruptcy laws. And now they won't even provide the modest release, relief that is provided on federal loans for people who end up in terrible financial circumstances. I think this is wrong. Roxy, play that clip for me, please, if we would. You know, borrowers who are in serious financial trouble, either because they've lost a job, they've lost a spouse, they've hit serious medical problems, can get a fresh start on pretty much every kind of debt uh, by declaring bankruptcy. They can deal with credit card debt, they can deal with mortgages, with payday loans, but student loans are treated differently. There's essentially no discharge, no matter how much trouble you're in or why you're in trouble. Federal student loans have been excluded from bankruptcy since 1998, and in 2005, the bank successfully lobbied Congress to end bankruptcy protection for private student loans as well. Now, the federal government at least offers federal borrowers programs for loan modifications, for default rehabilitation, and for income-based repayment, as we were just talking about that at least give people some chance to get back on their feet. Look, it's nothing like a fresh start in bankruptcy, and the federal government's still making huge profits off these loans, but at least it's something. Banks, by comparison, get the benefits of the bankruptcy exclusion and don't offer much of anything in exchange to help struggling borrowers. So last summer, the federal regulators, including the FDIC, the OCC, and the Federal Reserve, made it crystal clear that private student lenders could offer loan modifications like reduced interest rates to struggling borrowers without any penalty. But according to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, banks still effectively aren't offering that help. So what's the impact of that? Well, just three days ago, CNN published a story that gave an idea. It was a story about a woman who died, leaving her parents to care for three small children and also leaving them with $100,000 in student loan debt that the couple had co-signed. I think I just heard Mr. Hunt say that the private student loans have about a 97% co-signing rate. So the, the grandparents of these little children contacted the private lenders, but they couldn't get much help to manage the huge monthly payments. The couple considered bankruptcy over their daughter's student loan debt only to discover that bankruptcy is not an option to them. So here's my question. If struggling borrowers can't discharge their loans in bankruptcy, and if your banks won't give them loan modifications, Mr. Hunt, what are they supposed to do? 
So, Senator Warner, thank you very much for the question. Okay, that, that, the way, think about, think about what she just said there. Uh, a parent was benevolent enough to sign for this kid to go to school. And this kid will be in bank. Or this parent will be in bankruptcy now because of that. Think about that. Think about that. This kid was doing all the right things, Roxy. The parent decided that they needed to help this kid. This kid was going to make a better America. Unfortunately, the young person died. The kid died. And, I mean. It made it seem like she was doing everything she because she had three small kids. Yes, the woman who died. The woman who died had three, three small, small kids. kids. Yes, and she was doing everything. I feel like right I, from the time you're born, like there's you know American yes. dream includes college. Right. So why does college become so unaffordable? That it, there's a there's a long story behind that. And before we jump to Ernesto and Ernesto, <laughs> we don't want you to run too far. We want he's you. Gonna to go to Pledge he's going to go to Pledge Center for us. Yes, yes, we need gonna... tell him we need him in Pledge Center. No, we need him in Pledge. Okay, Central. but he, here's the, this is the, the thing that we need to understand, Roxy, and and this is what breaks my heart. This is why we do what we do. There was a time. Let's talk about Texas. We're in Texas. Mm -hmm. When I came to the United States and went to school in Texas. In-state tuition was $4 per hour, $4 per college hour. For, for out-of-state, yes, per college hour was $4. Out-of-state tuition was $40 per hour, 10 times as much. That is justified because somebody coming into the state, their parents didn't do for the state, etc. That was understandable. We complained about the $40. People complained about the $4. But what the, what the school, what the state saw was that it needed to invest in its people. In this new mantra of let's cut, let's cut, let's provide incentive for businesses, let's do all these things, what we've done is we've transferred the education system that used to be provided as a society to people through their tax dollars to make college affordable. We've instead given these tax breaks to people and asked those that are going to school to pay more of the cost of running the schools. The thing about it, Roxy, when you do well, you are not doing well for Roxy only. That degree that you have, Roxy, is not just for Roxy. That degree is to make Texas a better Texas. You're from Georgia. It was to make Georgia a better Georgia. And the one good thing about Georgia that Texas doesn't have is Georgia actually has a very good system for people who are dedicated to do well in school. Georgia will pay their school. Hope. However, hope is hard to... Right. But what I'm saying, even when we talk about cities that actually yeah. see the value of an education, yeah. if you if you do well, like you know Georgia, I was not one of those. The, I was not one of those students. Um, right. But you, which is a good incentive exactly to go for, and right. it's not just for um, like I know a, when I graduated high school, a lot of people got hope so they could go you know wherever they wanted, but you can also get hope throughout college exactly and which is a good reward system which is a great reward system and i don't think that should ever go away it's an investment it's a great investment and but again like where there's good there's bad and you know if you lose that hope and that was the only way you could go to college you don't go to college then you don't go to college or you take out student loans and then you're and married. that is where they got us so here's here's how bankers work in other words, and, and this is a sad part about the student loan program. Okay, let's say Roxy that you had uh, that that you you made mistakes in your life. I'm not saying you did. I'm saying let's say let's go under that assumption, and you you racked up twenty thirty thousand dollars in credit card bills, and you can no longer pay that. You can go to court and get a bankrupt, go into bankruptcy. That debt would be written off, written off, and Roxy can start life afresh. As a productive citizen, because your credit cards are forgiven, yes, your record would be bad for seven years, but you can get a fresh start. Student loans, the bankers went into Congress and lobbied Congress to ensure that student loans didn't fall under that, fall under that criteria. And that is the reason why the, the young ladies' parents on CNN, it, they co-signed for their parent, for their kids' loan. They did the right thing. When the kid died and that, those loans remained, they, the, the option that a corporation would have would be to say, I can't handle this, 
I will go into bankruptcy and get those those debts removed. My home is no longer at risk because of homestead. My 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 basic necessities are not of needs because the bankruptcy protects that. Student loans, you don't get that. Which is, uh, I uh, this is this is just me. I feel like you you know if I go and rack up. Twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars on credit card, like that. Those are like conscious mistakes right. I've made. Those are conscious purchases or conscious things that I've done that I know in my heart I'm unable to pay for. Student loans. That's that's just me trying to enter the world. Exactly. And like, what am I? I'm going to enter the world, and it's in debt. Exactly. How am I helping? How is that being helpful for it is anyone? Not. And that is the, that's that's how obscene it is. And that's why I made a video out of that video that you showed. I'm long time, I, made, I made a video where I said at the end of the video, I gave that last statement that, that she said, where she said it's simply wrong. And when she said it's simply wrong, I ended that video and I said, that is why you must vote. Because young people need to understand that what's going on in America today that they're, they are being sacrificed for corporations. And this is not a cliche. Everybody likes to jump on corporations and corporations this and corporations that. It's not about jumping on corporations. It's about giving breaks to people at the expense of our young. I'm sorry, your generation, I, I look at my daughter. You could be my daughter, uh, Roxy. I look <laughs> at this situation and I look and I see the world that we have left, that my generation has left for you guys. And unfortunately... What we've left is we've racked up a whole lot of irresponsibility, and then we tell you. R remember, I went to school at $40 a credit hour because I came in here uh, out of state, okay, I, at $40 an hour. But those that are going to school today are paying way above $40 an hour in real dollars. What I am, In effect, what my generation is telling your generation is, I use my past generation's tax dollars to pay for my education, and I used your tax dollars to give corporations a tax break. Baby, you are on your own. It, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That is what, what has happened. I, I wrote a blog, and you know what somebody told me? You are trying to create, uh, what is it, ageism or, 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 or a, battle between, a battle between the generations. And I'm like, yes, that's what I want. And I want your generation, Roxy, to come after my generation and tell my generation to step up. Exactly. But I, but again, like I did not know about student loans right. until thankfully I was in the position where I did not have to take out student right. loans, but I'm, but I just don't think people really know what they're getting into when it comes to getting out student loans they don't. and what, and I think a, a, a mixture of it is kind of like the tomfoolery and kind of pulling the wool over the kids' eyes of yes. banks and loan corporations and all that. But again, I also think it's got to do with going up in school. You don't really know too much about money. Exactly. And like I, uh, one of the other programs I work here in the daytime at KPFT is growing up in America, and they were talking about um, this little program it was like a, a a fake bank right and it was at schools and it kind of taught it interacted with kids and how it kind of talked like taught about banking and money right. things and i'm like that's what we need we exactly. need more education yes. on this is what a loan is this is how you you know this is what interest is right this is what a student loan is right and it's just a mixture of of both because i don't want to like blame Actually, I mean, yeah. I do want you to blame. I, I, okay, yeah, the, yes, yeah. Blame. It is. It is there. You know, the other gen. You know, my parents' generation, your yes. generation. That is. That is. Like, what What do you have to gain right now? We. You were... guys already have your jobs. You already have everything kind of figured out. You have your white picket fence. You have your. You have all this other stuff. Why do you need to? Why do Thank you need you. to do that, Roxy? I want to get some uh, some pitching from Ernesto for me. So um, uh, Ernesto, if Ernesto is listening now, I'd love for him to start asking some of help me ask some of these folks to keep these programs on air, keep politics done right on air. So Ernesto, are you are you there with me? I am. Talk to me, Ernesto. Help me ask our great listeners out there to be a part of 
this community. Roxy and I need you as a part of this community. Well, I think that I could say a lot of things, but the fact that people can hear this really intriguing conversation about something that is of national importance, something that's been on the national spotlight for the last year, is its best selling point. Because really, this is what Great Community Radio is about, having a conversation here locally about issues that are of importance to everyone. 713-526-5738 is the number to call right now to make a pledge of support, because this kind of radio requires your support and we talk about corporations and we talk about money and various other things you know corporations own and invest in radio stations for a reason because they understand the value that having access to the media and having access to shape a discussion can be now uh, before we get in and, and folks this is an important discussion we're having here on 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 student loans because this affects this affects people this affects Every, just about every single family. We have over a trillion dollars in student loans. Uh, actually, it's way over that. I, I don't quite recall the number off the top of my head right now. But what is very important that folks have to realize is how this impacts the economy, right? We have a generation of students coming out with so much debt that they cannot do the things to, for the economy that my generation could do. When my generation got out of college, they, ha they were able to buy homes, Roxy. They were able to buy cars. When you get out of college with $100,000 in debt, you've already, you already have a mortgage. You can't buy a home. That affects the economy because if you cannot buy a home, that actually affects the economy. It, it, it's, it's further than that. For the parents who decided to co-sign on these loans, given the type of jobs that we have now with the outsourcing and, and the lower wages, these loans are not easily paid back anymore. And a lot of, a lot of the students have to default and their parents are left holding the bag. And when the parents are left holding, it, it puts them in hardships because now their retirement is at risk. Yes, yeah, a domino effect. It's a domino effect. So, I mean, this is a direct transfer of wealth from the average American citizen to bankers, to the wealthy. Because who owns the banks? Who invests in the banks that provide money? I mean, you may have a few stocks, but you don't have the massive amount of stocks in these banks. So what we are doing is transfer, and, and it shows up in the numbers. When we look at the statistics of America, and we notice that America, that, that when, when they talk about income inequality, it is not a joke. It is not a fib. It is not, it is not something that isn't occurring. And we can show a direct correlation between income inequality and what's happening with student loans. We can show a direct correlation between the decline of the middle class and student loans. So all these things form that picture that is transferring all our income to a particular group. So we have to take care of that. And where are you hearing this, these kinds of stories? I mean, you're not, you listen to MSNBC, supposedly the liberal station. You don't get, Except when uh, uh, hey, Chris Hayes decides to go a little bit in debt, debt, you don't get this type of information relate to you. That is why Americans don't have this information, because it's not in the vested interest of those companies that own the, 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 the networks, meaning MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC, uh, MS, uh, they own these companies. So how do you expect these guys to go out on a limb and tell you this these types of information you won't get it a kpft a community radio that has loyalties to no one but it's public yes will tell you the truth and that's why we ask you to keep this on the air i think it's important for us to to let folks know roxy we are all here on a volunteer basis Absolutely. because we want to put this information out so when we're asking you for Donations. When we're asking you to help us keep this station on the air, yeah, we're not asking for a paycheck. We're not asking for a paycheck. We're no. saying we are doing our part for society. We're asking you to please help us. Please help us get this information that people need to know that they don't know, so that they can vote their interests and not their fears. We really mean these types of information. So, before uh, I want to pass it back to Ernesto to to have a few more words to to give encouragement to our people as to why we really must have these types of programming out there. Thank you very much, folks, for being a part of KPFT.org. Thank you for being a part of Done Right. You have a wonderful night, and please keep calling and go to the tip jar. Good night.
Thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. You can personally reach me by sending an email to Egberto at politicsdoneright.com. Remember, Egberto is spelled E G B E R T O. Change starts with you. 90.1 KPFT gives you information not tainted by corporate interest. Please visit kpft.org and contribute. Let's ensure continued access to real information and news remain available to all. Again, thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right.